This is a guided visualization for the marathon. Find a comfortable place to sit or lie. Close your eyes. And allow yourself to drop down inside. Feeling the relaxation in your body. It's the beginning of a marathon. There are balloons and banners and colors and noise. And you're standing in a crowd of runners. You can hear them talking to each other and feel the feelings and smell the smells. And Good morning, good looking. It's 6 o'clock on the west coast. Rise and shine. Your forecast, sunshine by afternoon. This morning, mostly cloudy conditions will prevail, and that'll be just what the doctor ordered for all those crazy guys and gals out trying to complete the Vancouver International Marathon this morning. Can you imagine? It's hard enough even thinking about running one mile. Well, they're going to do 26 miles before breakfast. <laughs> This is the story of Gary the Roadrunner's second marathon, a distance of 26.2 miles. Rooted in legend, the marathon is the ultimate goal any runner can climb. It's the Mount Everest of running, and the first goal of any marathon is to just finish. The dozens of smaller 10K and half marathon races completed in the runner's past suddenly become insignificant as the athlete starts to train more than ever before, often training at least four miles a day almost every day of the week and up to three hours at a time at least one day a week. Over a four or five month schedule, the marathoner-to-be will patiently log almost 500 training miles, rain or shine. Only one person in a thousand will ever be fit enough to complete a marathon, or some would say stubborn enough to keep going. After all, most marathons just end up going right back to where they started from. In 1993, Gary weighed in at 208 pounds. 1994, 40 pounds lighter. This is the story of Gary's second marathon finish. hundred runners from 25 countries hit the streets today for the 24th annual Vancouver Marathon. I feel really good knowing that you're going to do well in this race of 26 miles. It's not as long as it sounds and you'll do well. You've trained hard. You're prepared. Such visualization might have changed the legend of the marathon had Pheidippides known the value of mental as well as physical preparedness back in 490 BC. According to Greek legend, after his outnumbered Athenian army astonishingly defeated more than 30,000 invaders, he set out by foot from the plain of Marathon to carry news of the conquest some 25 miles to the south. After announcing the victory, exhausted, he dropped dead. Every marathoner, even those at the back, is familiar with the sense of imminent personal disaster. From start to finish, more than one runner has died a thousand deaths. Vancouver International Marathon got underway, ooh, about 17 minutes ago from BC Place. There are a little over 42 kilometers to run in this marathon. 2,000 entries from 18 countries will be taking part in the marathon. Might want to keep in mind that uh, roads are going to be closed off due to this. And if you want to check it out, the viewing points are Broad Street Bridge. That'll be early in the race.
just relaxing and running and relaxing and running. And pretty soon you reach six miles. That was fast. That's good. And you settle down into your pace. And think about the next six miles coming up. Water! 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 It was across the famous Lionsgate Bridge. The experienced runner had known to not get caught up with the pace of the half marathoners who had turned back at the bottom of the almost two mile straight uphill climb to Prospect Point Lookout. Halfway, 13.1 miles down, 13.1 miles to go. When the marathon was introduced to the Olympics back in 1896, the sanctioned distance was 26 miles exactly. But in 1908, the Olympic Games were held in London, and the course was extended up the Windsor Castle driveway so the royal grandchildren could watch from the royal lawn, or an extra 385 yards. It's at this stage of man's ultimate endurance test, wrong decisions may sabotage any hopes of finishing. But the training miles are in the bank. The carbo loading's been done. The rest's been had. He's been a good camel drinking plenty of liquids and psychologically has broken the course down into several manageable distances. Now the smartest way to the finish line is to just have fun. The runner might reflect on how glad he is he decided not to bring along music. Or he might try tricking his subconscious with larger-than-life visualization techniques. soon you see the 18 mile mark coming up and you think of all those training runs that you've done of 18 miles you're strong and feeling good running within yourself just another couple of miles and then you'll be to 20 and the real race will begin three kilometer mark the runners are in pain and it's now the little things that count and this one here is obviously a Japanese runner um, and that's some special high energy drink that he's got Wall Street in the Vancouver International Marathon pops up at about the 20 mile mark and oddly enough the infamous wall in any marathon is also usually about the 20 mile mark. Technically, the wall is the point where glycogen stores in the liver and muscle tissue are no longer available. 
It's far beyond the fatigue point. It's the point of intense, total exhaustion, much like when a car sputters and runs out of fuel. Physically, it's much more than the force is greater than three to five times your body weight being placed on the foot and dissipating up the leg. By about the 40,000th step, legs feel like someone had poured cement into them. Muscle cramping frequently occurs. It is only the result of training, persistence, and stick to that the experienced runner is able to finish. Not just leg cramps, but also cramping in the lower back, shoulders, and chest, making breathing itself difficult. The wall is considered to be the real halfway mark of the marathon. The next 6.2 miles are equivalent in perceived effort to the entire 20 miles just completed. It's at this point, out there on the course with the pack thinned out, that anything can go wrong. And you push on, relaxing your jaw and lowering your shoulders, breathing deeply into your belly. Imagine that energy coming into your legs, your knees lifting, being lifted by wires held by some giant puppeteer. Welcome to 1995 winner, Graziano Gonzalez Rios from Mexico. At the end, the man with his arms raised in victory won because he still had a bounce in his step. And over the next hour and a half, the rest of the pack struggled towards the finish line, each demonstrating just how hard it is to run a marathon. Hard as you can now. This is what it's all about, coming down to the finish line. As hard as you can. You have less than 20 seconds. Keep it pushing. Come on. Everything you got left now. You got 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Come on. Get through that line as hard as you can. Number 626, the Gary's second marathon finish. One in a thousand, with a slightly slower time than the first and a swollen knee. The marathon, where everyone starts as an equal and everyone finishes as a winner. What legends are made of. Can you give yourself permission to rest, knowing that any time that you go for a goal, you can feel it, see it, and achieve it in your mind's eye and eventually have it in reality.